Good morning. My name is Maya Schumacher, and I'm originally from Tacoma, Washington, and I am a clinical anatomy research fellow at the Seattle Science Foundation. Today's presentation will be on the paramastoid process and its anatomical and clinical implications. So variations and abnormalities of the occipital bone and upper cervical vertebrae have clinical interests um, because they can result in pathology. Clinical, clinicians and surgeons treating patients with skull-based injuries and diseases should have detailed knowledge of the morphological variations that can occur to, in order to minimize complications. Today, I present an important occipital bone variation, the paramastoid process, and I will be talking about its anatomy, radiology, and clinical consequences. So the paramastoid process is the inferior extension of the jugular process on the occipital bone. It is lateral to the occipital condyle, medial to the mastoid process, and when the paramastoid is present, it is flanked medially by the occipital artery. And if you look at the photo, the outlined and arrow point to the paramastoid process. Um, when the paramastoid process is enlarged, it has a tendency to articulate or fuse with the transverse process of the atlas. This can potentially cause neck and head pain and decrease mobility of this area. So in 1815, the paramastoid process was first described by Meckel. And in 1851, Cuvier eluded to the paramastoid process um, being able to articulate with the transverse process of the atlas. However, it wasn't till 1894 when McAllister defined the paramastoid process as an extension of the jugular process and documented articulation with the atlas. So this is a schematic drawing of the atlanto-occipital joint, um, and I will elucidate two structures that are potentially involved in paramastoid um, formation. So um, just to orient you, A is the jugular foramen, B is the atlanto-occipital ligament, and C is the rectus capitis lateralis muscle. So it is thought that when excessive tension or pulling um, by the rectus cap capitis lateralis muscle and the lateral atlanto-occipital ligament on the jugular process um, potentially forms the paramastoid process. Um, McAllister also wrote that he believes that articulation with the atlas occurs when um, ligaments between the transverse process and the jugular process um, ossify. And if you see in the red box here, this is where um, a, paramastoid present, a paramastoid process would be present. So um, usually when asymptomatic, a paramastoid process is found accidentally through um, radiograph exams. And however, when symptoms are present, it's best seen through the anterior to posterior open mouth view. And um, I've labeled that as APOM. And when symptoms are present, sometimes it's hard to even see the paramastoid process through this viewing. And you'll need a CT scan to confirm if the, um, if the paramastoid is articulating or fused with the transverse process of the atlas. So figure A is a radiograph exam in the anterior to posterior open mouth view. And it is a unilateral a paramastoid fusing to the lateral transverse process of the atlas. And if you can't see the um, arrows, I have a red box for you. Um, and B is a schematic drawing, again, in anterior to posterior open mouth view, showing a progression of paramastoid um, process articulation with the transverse process. So the blue um, figure is the paramastoid process, and the yellow is the transverse process of the atlas. And as you can see um, in the middle, 
the paramastoid process is starting to form a joint with the epitransverse um, process. And then on the far, um, on the far left um, is bony fusion between the two. So the paramastoid process, um, especially when articulating um, with the transverse process of the atlas, can have a slew of symptoms and pathologies existing, as I put them on the PowerPoint. Um, a case report of a 21-year-old woman um, reported chronic neck pain and headaches and abnormal neck motion. And as you can see in the figure above, indicated by the red box, in um, a neutral position, she has torticollis. And it, the case report also um, talked about how she had rotational issues to the left. So detailed knowledge of morphological variations at the craniocervical junction is important in order to perform safe neck and head surgeries. Um, if removal of the paramastoid is needed, um, caution must be given to important regional structures like vertebral arteries, facial nerves, and contents of the jugular foramen. Um, minor variations at the craniocervical junction can have clinical implications as seen in some cases found when having the paramastoid process. Therefore, good understanding of skull-based variations is important when viewing images and performing skull-based surgeries. Thank you. Perfect. So um, you talk about the, some uh, complication of the paramastoid process. I mean, mm -hmm. the symptom of the hmm. paramastoid process, the headache. You said headache. So what does headache happen? So the thought behind it is the headache happens because there's like tension between the two. So um, there's also grinding that can occur, especially when you do the no motion. No. And um, that's why the um, sh they believed that there was um, headache involved. They actually didn't perform surgery on this woman. They actually did um, head and neck manipulation, kind of hoping that they would be able to like write the um, torticollis. But she, it did help for a short period of time. However, the like neck and head pain came back. Um, but so, but they didn't do surgery. So for radical treatment, hmm. we should do surgery. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.